newest vendor partner. Um, we get questions um, and and need owners and managers need represent references for solar partners. Um, I probably get two or three a month. So we know that solar is a big deal to owners right now. And uh, I'm so glad that you can prevent, uh, can prevent, present this information um, about how financially it is the right time to do solar. So mm -hmm. anyway, welcome. All right, thank you so much Phyllis, for that introduction. Um, are we still planning for the break or should I just continue? Nope, you can go ahead and get started. All right, perfect. Good morning, everybody. Uh, one and all present in this webinar. So we've been hearing a lot about solar and storage and solar in Arkansas. So we are here to present from AV Solar a webinar on why solar in Arkansas, why does it make sense, especially now, and what was so wrong before. On tops, what are the incentives that are gonna enable you to buy this product and break down a few myths that we have in terms of solar is very expensive, solar is a big offer in payment, and this presentation will pretty much break that down. To explain you a little bit about this presentation, to give you a very real life scenario, what we have done is we've taken permission from one of our clients who's an existing client of ours, and we've taken their storage facility as an example for a case study today. This example will help business owners that are part of this webinar very realistically understand if it's gonna make sense for you or not. And a lot of information is gonna be shared through this presentation. Please feel free to reach out for questions after that. And if I go through some part really quick, do not worry, we are offering free site surveys to re-explain this entire process for your facility. So let's dive into it. So to explain this, like I said, we have split this into six sections. First section is gonna be the general financial overheads of the industry. This I do not need to explain anybody out here. Business owners would understand this better than me. But just to give you a real life approach, what we have done is we've taken 808 storage units around the country and specifically concentrate on the Southwest region that we're talking about in Arkansas. And we have taken certain figures to see what the overheads are gonna be and what utility which is the major point of discussion over here, is gonna behave. So let's dive into it. So like I said, the first slide is gonna be the general finances and overheads. To understand this, we have actually taken into a report. That report is the CBRE report. This report, um, like everybody understands, um, storage units can be, it's a very simple work to put in, but there are a lot of different options that you have. You can have a climate control unit, you could have 100 units, you could have 500 units. So to put a common line of understanding, what we have done is this report is based on rentable area per square feet. So that way it will give you a very close idea of what it will be for your particular facility. All right, jumping into the next slide. This is the gist of the report that we pulled together. So as you can see, there are 808 facilities and especially the one we're concentrating is the 80 facilities in the Southwest region. If your profits are $11.78, then $4.45 are the general overheads of a storage units. These include real estate taxes, property insurances, utilities, repairs and maintenance, administration, on off site management, advertising, and miscellaneous. The important part is this $4.45 is approximately 37.7% of your profit ratio. This is the operating expense generally related to most storage units. And the utilities out there, you see 0.22 cents. So in general, the gist of this uh, report is overheads of storage units are 37.7% compared to the profits and utilities are 5% of that. So that'll be mentioned in the next slide. As we can see, 37.7% was the operating expense, which was this right here, $4.45 and 5% of which is the utility cost. What do these numbers account to? Now we will take these data and we will put it into the real life scenario of our customer who's an existing client of AV Solar and see how it played out for him. So that, that gives you a ballpark idea of how it's gonna play out for you guys. The case study that we're talking about, Arkansas Modern Storage. So this is a made up name. Uh, the facility is a real, like we mentioned, is an existing client. He's based in Hope, Arkansas. He's powered by Hope Power and Light, which is a utility in the region. And for easier understanding, we've just taken a revenue of $1 million. It does not, some businesses are more, less, 
just to keep our calculations a little simple, let's go with a million dollars in revenue. And when you go with this million dollars in revenue, just from the last slide, we learned two things. 37.7% is your operating expense and 5% is your utility overheads. What does that account to for this particular case study? That accounts to $377,000 of expenditure on overheads of this facility with five units. And 5%, which is the electricity cost, comes to 18,850, which is $1,570 a month. Now this number right here would relate to a lot more business owners because this is what you guys pay on a monthly basis. And like I said in the start of the presentation, we've tried to keep it as close as we can to Arkansas real life case scenario. So you guys can be like, okay, so I'm paying $1,700. No, maybe I'm paying $1,200 a month and more or less find your way around it. So taking these two numbers into cost, uh, the, 18, uh, the 18,850, which is the utility expenditure and the 377,000, which is the overheads. Now let's actually understand how electricity works. How does your bill work? Now this applies to all business owners, every utility in the state of Arkansas. Let's move forward. Like I said, the bill is actually, the bill that you get from utility tells you a lot about your facility. If you pay a little more attention to it, it kind of relates it out there for you. So on the left side that you see right here, this is what we call the usage history. This is the footprint from January to December of what you guys are using in a month. And on the right hand side, which I have zoomed in over here, they're giving you a cost analysis that, all right, for the month of May, you pulled 2000 units, we're gonna charge you $258 at a base rate of 11.52 plus 10 cents a month. So basically when you add all of these numbers together, what you get is a base rate of electricity, 12 to 13 cents a kilowatt hour. Why is this base rate important? If you were building your facility and you go to a metal roofer and you say, I have thousand square foot of roof, what's your dollar per square foot? The same way all electricity and solar works around. What is your price per kilowatt hour? And that kilowatt hour is that unit of electricity. Sometimes, like you can see in September, people might take 7,000 units because it's a different weather. And if you have gas heat, January, you're only gonna use 1,100 units or 1,800 units. So based on the way your utility is set up, the way your climate, do you have climate control units? Do you not have climate control units? All these things will come from your bill directly. It will give you a 12 month footprint of what you are using. Why is that important? We'll get to that in a minute, but this should give you a good understanding of how to understand your own usage and how to see the base rate your utility is charging. Now that we know the base rate of electricity for this case study, we need to remember four summary points that we just realized throughout this presentation. First point was annual cost of this facility, which was 5% from the report, came to $18,850. Monthly cost is a $1,571. Annual kilowatt hours used. Now this is the units that I was talking about. So for this facility, they're using 145,000 units at a base rate of 13 cents a unit. When you multiply these two numbers, you'll be able to get your annual usage. Divide that by 12, you'll be able to get your monthly usage. And this is exactly how you understand your bill. So for this particular case study that we're gonna proceed with, there's an $18,850 overhead of utility bill, and that accounts to 145,000 units. Now, as y'all can see, there's an asterisk over here. This case study has strictly been taken for a non-climate control unit. Any units that are climate control or have more units than five units, all these numbers will only be better for you, not worse, because your overall dependence of utility is as high as 15% of your overheads or 10% in that range. So taking a very worst case scenario, if you have a completely non-climate control storage unit and you have a really low bill, then this is your case study example. Whatever returns I show you will be much better when it comes to higher the usage, better the returns. Moving off to the next slide, keeping these four points in our mind. Let's understand now that we know 145,000 units is the net target. If we produce 145,000 units, we are not gonna have a bill. And we understand that what is the cost of that 145,000 units, which is 18,850. Let's see how solar basically works and how is this gonna help you. 
And what is the basic principle behind solar, which is what we call net metering. Net metering is the policy that enables solar in Arkansas or in every state. What this policy stands for is, as the word says, net meter. Solar, as we all know, is not consistent throughout the day. The sun is not available 24 hours a day. We have 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of night, an average. During the 12 hours of sunlight, the target of every solar system is to produce three to four times than what you're using, pump it back into the grid so that your meter actually spins backwards. And in the night, when there is no sun that comes into play, no matter what electricity you're drawing to keep your unit running, there will not be a charge for that because you did your due diligence and pumped that electricity back into the grid in the morning time. And all of these back and forth, which looks really complicated, is gonna be down to your meter bar. Your meter will actually show you two arrows. Are you sending electricity or are you receiving? Let's go through these two videos and you guys will get a much better grip of what this net metering is so we can move forward in understanding how this will be beneficial to solar. This is an on-grid solar system, the most popular type of solar setup in America. To understand how it works, let's see it in action as it powers a typical American home for a day. Let's begin at night. At this point, relatively little power is being used. The fridge, some phone chargers, and maybe the heating or cooling. There's no solar right now, so electricity usage is met by power imported from the grid. In the morning, energy use spikes as the family prepares for the day. They're using kitchen appliances, hair dryers, hot water heating, and other devices. Part of their energy needs will be met with solar, but as the sun isn't very strong yet, the home will continue to import from the grid. At midday, the sun is much stronger, and the solar system reaches max output. This is also when electricity usage is at its lowest, as everyone's out for work, school, or errands. That means lots of surplus power is produced. In an on-grid system, that surplus is exported to the grid. In return, the utility pays for the power by crediting their electricity bill. In states with net metering, homeowners have the advantage of selling their power at the same rate they buy it for. In the afternoon, the sun moves downwards through the sky, causing solar output to drop. However, power usage is still low as most of the family is not home yet. The system continues to export power for bill credits. It's evening. The setting of the sun means there's no more solar. Energy use now peaks as the family returns home and runs lights, entertainment devices, and kitchen appliances. Grid energy transfers now switch direction. The home stops exporting and starts importing power instead. It's night again, marking the end of the daily energy cycle. The on-grid system imported energy for much of the day but this gets offset by the high energy exports achieved by the system during midday and afternoon. In fact, a properly designed on-grid solar system can achieve 100% offset of a home's power requirements, which means electricity bills with zero net usage charges. Like we saw over here that we cannot control the production part of the cycle, but due to this net metering that is available, as long as we pump enough energy back into the grid where you're not taking anything excessive than what you've already pumped back, you simply will not have a bill. So the first video was to explain you how production works in pattern to the days, in pattern to the different hours in the day with relation to the sun's position. Now let's look at how does your meter actually work when solar is overproducing and underproducing in different parts of the day. That will be displayed in the second video. When you go solar, you're still going to be connected to the grid and you're going to need to know how net metering works. Net metering policy varies state to state. However, the basics behind the policy are very similar. Here's how it works. During the day, your solar system produces energy and sends it through your panel box. Some of this energy will be immediately used in your house and the rest will flow back out onto the grid. When the energy you produce is going onto the grid, your electric meter will actually spin backwards and decrease your net usage and you will essentially receive a credit from your utility company. At night, since your solar system won't produce any energy, you'll start using energy from the grid again, and your meter will spin forward, increasing your net usage. At the end of the billing cycle, the net amount of electricity used is what is charged to your account. This amount may be negative or positive, so you can either get a credit or a charge on your account. Once you go solar in some utilities, you'll only pay for your electricity once a year, which is known as the true-up period. The same way net metering works day to day, it can work month to month, where your negative bills help cancel out your positive bill, leaving you only to pay the net amount for the year. 
like we saw correctly over here, one more thing to understand is solar production is not just e not uneven during a day, but it's uneven duration of a year as well. In summers, you're going to produce way more than what you're going to be required. But like I said, these credits are like old data plans, old rollover minutes. They roll on from day to day, hour to hour, month to month, year to year. Up to 24 months, these credits will be accumulated. And at the end of 24 months, which is two life cycles, the utility will call you. And if you're generating more than what you need, you can actually buy those credits back at a dollar value. So this is what net metering in a gist is to, and it is very important to understand this part of solar because this is what enables your facility to start saving that dollar value. Let's go forward now that we understand net metering and how it works. Let's put this entire understanding into the case study that we have, which is the Arkansas modern story. Next, I'm going to show you how solar will enable us to offset. Now that we know net metering, as long as we deliver 145,000 units, doesn't matter which part of the month or which part of the day. As long as we do deliver that, you will not have a bill. Let's see how we do that. This is one more just on the, another understanding of how it might work in case an installer is not able to offset 100% of your usage. Let's say you use 1,000 kilowatt hours a month. 800 came from solar. 200 is what you're gonna get billed for. So a good installer's job is to keep this remainder value as close to your consumption value, if not above. So your bill will always stay a negative or a zero. Now that we understand the working of net metering, let's dive back into the Arkansas modern storage and see the phenomena that we were talking about of how solar can completely offset it. We'll be jumping into a different screen now. Okay, there we go. So this was the unit that we had discussed about. It's located, like I said, it's located in Hope, Arkansas. Now this is a 3D layout of the property. It has four units, five units, and two RV storage units. So like you can see, now the first question that comes to the mind is, how are you, Jamin, sitting so many miles apart, so sure about what the slope or what the angle of my storage unit is, I've never been there. So that's what we pay for from the satellites is what we call LIDAR data. As Soon as you click on that data, if you notice closely, I'm able to pull up the height of your structure as well as the slope and the round around obstruction view that we have all the trees that are covering you. The reason this is important is because without knowing the amount of sunlight your storage unit actually receives, no installer can ever tell you what is the correct value to offset that usage. So this is one part of it. The second part of it is what we call an irradiance data. This irradiance data, if you remember, uh, we had 145,000 units as our net target, which over here, if you see this number, will keep changing, 1460, 1640. The reason this number is changing is trying to tell you that this side of the roof gets more sun than this side of the roof. You can also see a color difference between the two. The reason all these values are important because this as an installer and as a business owner will give you 100% satisfaction that the company has done its due diligence in understanding of how exactly the sun travels on the property. And we can see to the shade, you can see how the shade is traveling on the trees. So from the moment to moment, time to time, minute by minute simulation is what we have. And we can do this for different months. Like you can see the horizon of the earth, of the sun is very high because it's summer, let's put it in January, and you can see how it dropped right there. So basically this offer enables us to understand to the point without actually coming to your facility of how solar is gonna work and is it actually gonna give you some advantage or is it just solar it just doesn't make sense for you. So let's, now that we know how we come to this area, if we click on this right section over here, like I had mentioned, our target was 145,000 units. The system is producing 145,289 units. The system will also account into all the traveling losses, the shading, the soiling, the pollen being deposited on the roof. Every single calculation has been taken into consideration before we tell you that uh, 113 kilowatt system is gonna give you a net 100% offset. Now, Pay close attention over here. 
the July, the gray part is what you usually take from the grid and the green is what the solar is producing. So as you can see, you're taking only 13,500 units and you're producing 18,800 units. That's way more than what you need for that month. But like I had explained, these credits roll on from month to month to month. So when you produce or overproduce in the months of July, that actually helps you in the month of Jan. In the month of Jan, your bill is 10,700, while the system's only able to kick out 5,200. At that point, this overproduction will completely come into play over here. And that's how net metering basically works. So this all was in terms of explaining you of how we are social when we say that 113 kilowatt system, which is in other words, approximately 300 panels, two, two surfaces of the five units and this customer will have a complete net zero bill. This is how we're so sure about. The other thing that we all, the other thing that, now let's get back to our presentation and let's dive into what more can solar have to offer. So this was part one of understanding your electricity bill, understanding what we have to use around the year in terms of units. And the third was how will solar offset it? Let's move forward in understanding how is this offset so guaranteed? How do you guys know that this is gonna happen for a fact? So the good news about solar is everything that is installed on your roof from nuts, poles, panels, microcomputers, inverters, everything is covered in labor and parts for 25 years of the life of the system. And acts of God, such as hail, tornadoes, or hail, tornadoes, earthquakes, or anything worse that you can think of is again covered by your insurance. We have done projects as, as big as 600,000 to as small as $5,000. The biggest insurance increase that we have seen was on a half a million dollar job, which was $60 a year. That accounts to $5 premium increase a month. That's pretty much close to nothing compared to the amount of money you invest in a system. So in acts of God, insurance will cover you. In normal cases, you are covered in labor and parts. So you never ever as a solar customer pay again. The entire idea of getting you to go solar, at least from us as a company, is to make sure you don't pay again. Now, this all is fine and fantabulous. The software looks great. How do you as a customer know that my system is actually working or there needs to be a warranty claim. And that is where Solar Edge, the company that we do business with, is the industry leaders for. So, there we go. So this is what all of our customers enjoy. This is actually a live system that I'm showing you right now. It's a manufacturing unit located in Lonsdale, Arkansas. As you can see right now in current time, the factory is requiring 121 kilowatts of power. In general situations, this power would be coming from the grid. But as you guys can clearly see over here, the solar panels are kicking way more than the unit is produce, using and the remaining is getting spilled over into the grid. And that is when you start building up your credits. If you see this lifetime revenue, $21,000 is the saving of this customer by just not paying the bill. And the system started in January. So if that tells you guys about how detailed the monitoring is going to be, this is going to be an app on your phone. You can have it on your units. You can have it on your computers. The limit of this app is up to hundred different devices. So as long as you've got less than hundred devices, we can get it up on each one of them. This is going to be your favorite part. Let me actually go to the previous day. So it kind of gives you a full day scenario. Now, like when we were understanding net metering, I told you that there is no way we have sun during the nighttime. So there is gonna be no solar production. And at that point, you're simply pulling power from the grid. That is this red area right now. The red is what you pull from the grid. The green is what the solar has produced. As you can see in different time, it will show you different production. What has solar produced throughout the day? And the blue is what has your factory actually used while solar was produced. Because a part of your solar production is actually being used on site like you can see over here. Out of approximately 180 kilowatts, 120 is being used at site and remaining 60 is getting spilled over. And this will be always in lifetime. So the important thing is the system produced 101.38. It consumed 1.11 and it exported 0.47 versus it imported 0.19. This day, this customer will not have a bill no matter he runs his factory to the full of its potential. This is a major overhead that we today realistically can get rid of, and that's what solar does for you.
this all is great, but like I had said, the system was turned on in 2019 December. This is the saving that the system has achieved this customer since December. Now, this all is good. This gives you a working idea of the entire system. But what if this system right here has 700 panels on it? How do you know each panel is working? Because the warranty is on each square pieces. Pay close attention over here. You'll be able to see a lot of squares. Each black square is actually a solar panel and that you will be able to see on your own app. When you click on that layout option right there, each square that you see is actually a solar panel. And anytime you wanna know what they're doing, you click on it and then it will tell you what the voltage is, what the power value is and how it's been doing. No, this gives the warranty process very transparent. Nobody can tell you that your system is not working when you can see it yourself. It's gonna be color coded. If it is black, that means it's not working and it will show a zero number on it. You guys can see how evenly these panels are working. 3.67, 3.58, 3.75, 3.35, they're all in approximately the same range. This kind of monitoring and 25 years labor and part warranty makes solar really lucrative now. And that's why you've been hearing a lot of solar now rather than before. Now let's get back to the presentation and see how incentives will help us in realizing even greater benefits from this system. So we understood, so far, we understood four parts. We understood uh, Arkansas Modern Storage, which is a utility in Hope, Ar which is a storage unit facility in Hope, Arkansas, that had an annual bill of an $18,850. In other words, it was 145,000 units. 113 kilowatts solar system will completely offset it and bring it down to zero dollars and this system will be covered in labor and in parts 25 years as well as by the insurance and you will have control over it for 25 years to see how that system is working and on the 24th year as well if the system is producing less than 84 percent of the first day production you can replace the entire system at no cost and that's what the warranty stands for so now let's come back to the incentives parts. Now let's come to the financials of, all right, solar does make great sense. It is able to do what we want it to do. How much does it actually cost to get the system now? And I know this has been the most evaded part of the equation, but before we really dive into it, let's understand two more things, which is 26% investment tax credit and MACRs. These two right here are going to be your best friends that enable you to buy the system. Let's look into it a little deeper about what exactly that stands. So the income, uh, the federal income tax credit, 26%. As you can see over here, 2019 was 30%. It was 30% altogether, but it's 26% this year. If we claim it, and if you go next year, it's 20, 22% and it's 10%. What these tax credits stand for is if the system cost was $100,000, $26,000 off of that is tax credit. These tax credits are not rebates. They're a dollar for dollar tax credit. Uncle Sam will give you this back as long as you have the liability for it. You can go one back, one year behind, that is in 2019, if you paid into taxes and you ended up buying a solar system, you can actually claim back those taxes. As well as this will sit in your account for 20 years till you take full advantage of it. So this is coming back to you one way or the other. And that's why we call this 26% solar investment tax credit not rebate. The other part of the equation is what we call MACRs. Now this is a little complicated to understand because it might vary from business to business, but this is a general understanding of it. And like we said, uh, your CPA would be the best person to kind of give you more insight into it. But just to explain to you what this exactly stands for, this is called MACRs. This has been into the system for a very long time. All businesses take advantage of their product by depreciating them. The schedule is three, five, seven, a lot, but for solar, all systems will fall strictly under a five-year schedule. Is depreciation calculated before tax credit? So it's not like you have 26% of tax credit and then you have again depreciation. It's not that simple. The IRS says that you can actually only take advantage of one half of that tax credit, which is half of 26, which is 13. So only 87% of the system can be depreciated, not 100%. Now let's see what that comes to. If it was a $100,000 system, that would be $87,000. Now, let's understand this macro is a little better in detail about how exactly it works. So a solar system over here has taken example cost $300,000. 
26% is a federal, federal tax credit as we just went through and 13% of which one half of the tax credit, we won't be able to take advantage in MACRs. So 87% of the system is available for depreciation, which is 261,000. Now the federal tax rate is 24% and the state tax is seven. It might depend, it might vary if you're from a different state. So whatever your state taxes, we need to find that out first. Take your 24% multiplied by 87%, which is the depreciable amount of the system, you will get $62,640. Take 7%, which is your state tax, again, might vary for your state, multiply it by, again, the 87%, which is 261, and you get 18,270. 18, and when you add 18,270 and 62,000 together, when you add 62,640 and 18,270 together, you get almost 80,910, which is 27% of the cost of the system. So you just took advantage of 26% of the cost of the system by the investment tax credit. And MACRS, again, allows you to depreciate the system up to 27% more. Simple mathematics, that's 53% of the cost of the system is completely paid off by tax incentives by the federal government. Also, you cannot take advantage of all these credits in the first year. Just the tax credit can definitely be the 26%, but the depreciation rate, 100% federal, which is the 24% you can claim in the first year, but state only allows you to claim 20% in the first year. That amounts to 66,294. So if you add all these numbers together, 82% of your system depreciation savings comes during the first year itself. And that's why solar is so lucrative. As long as you have a tax liability and you have an electric bill that you're looking to offset. A combination of these two things together makes solar extremely lucrative. Now that we understand all the credits, we understand how to read the bills, we understand what solar is gonna do for us and we understand how we're so sure that just two of these units are gonna cover everything. We've done our research. Summarize all of these points Cost of electricity from the first slide that we had the report was 5% for a million dollar business, which comes to 18,850. Annual cost of electricity, annual usage was 145,000 unit. Annual production was 145,289. And the solar system was 113 kilowatts. Now, the next page is finally gonna explain you if for this particular Arkansas modern storage, does solar make sense? or is it just too expensive to even look at it? The next slide will give you answers to all of that. Just keep in mind the two incentives that we told you about the MACRs and investment tax credit. So this is a rough sheet that we like to display to business owners and we thought that this would be the correct answer to most of your questions. So there are a lot of numbers over here. The only number first, if everybody can pay attention to is the monthly average, $1,570. If you remember from our estimate over here, 1,570, that is the exact number that we have put into the sheet for, excuse me. That's the exact number that we have put in the sheet as a monthly average. Now, if you guys have your calculators out, when you take that number and you multiply it 12 times, it's $18,850. This is the annual first year cost of Arkansas Modern Storage in Hope, Arkansas. This column right here is doing nothing, but it's adding year one and year two for you together to show you that by two years, you'll spend already $38,265. And you see this 3% increase and you see the 1570 go to 1617, that 3% inflation is $1.5 and 1.5% utility. Utility rates on a general go above, go about three to 5% up every year. And if you wanna take a worst case scenario, we have only taken 1.5% of utility and 1.5% dollar inflation. Keep adding all these numbers together. If this storage facility doesn't go solar or did not go solar before us and kept paying their bills the way they anticipated, the 25 year accumulated cost of utility bills is $687,000. This is at 3% inflation. You guys can do this yourself. It's a simple compounded 3% of 1,570 as your principal amount. When you compound it over 12 months and 3%, you will get this exact number. Now, what is the cost of this system? The cost of this system is $190,000. Definitely, it's a 113 kilowatt system that amounts to 
190,000, but I did mention the two tax credit, the 26% federal tax credit and the first year macros depreciation, as well as what we're gonna save you on your bill that I just showed you on the software, that we will be able to replace your bill. And if we are not, then you have your app and your meter to show you that it's not happening. In that case, we have warranties and guarantees against that. So take this, take this, and take this out of your total cost of your system. The reason is this is coming back from Uncle Sam, so is this, and this is your utility saving. That hope utility is not gonna charge you. So when you take these three numbers out of it, 112,658 is what we like to call the real cost or out of pocket expense. Any business owner in this webinar that decides to go solar, if buys this system, year one, they would be in the waters by $112,000. The reason I'm showing you this sheet is I'm trying to, I'm trying to subtract the annual cost that we're saving you over here from your upfront investment to even show you if there's an ROI period. And what you guys can see right here is in the fourth year to the fifth year, you will break even. You have 25 years of warranty on the system. That's more than five times return on your investment. This is why solar makes sense today, now, and the question is between $687,000 and $112,000. Because this bill is not going down unless we just shut off the business and close the doors to it. If we expand the business, this bill will go even higher. So just taking this as an average, the question utilities don't like solar companies a lot is they are gonna lose $687,000 off of you the day you decide to go solar, if that was your monthly. Now, obviously, even all these benefits taken into advantage, I do understand as a business owner myself that coming up with $112,000 off of cash flow is not something that everybody wants to do and nobody wants to put up their business as a collateral for a loan that is solar. All of these barriers were present previously that made solar not very attractive. The credits and incentives were always available, but still that dollar value right here, that scares everybody off. There is no way any business owner could pull the cash flow out of their business and invest it towards like that. So finally, we as a company found a solution to for it, and that's what this webinar was mainly targeted towards. Is this solar system actually a financial burden? Is it really feasible, or does it have just crazy amount of returns? And that's possible. Let's let us tell you about. So this is a gist of the system, $190,000 is the cost of this system. These are the two tax credits that are involved in the equation. This is the 25 year utility cost that we just showed you in that table at 3%. So when you subtract this, this, your out of pocket cost versus your total cost. That's the difference. Now, how, going back to our question, how are we actually gonna enable to do this is Arkansas Federal Credit Union finally opened the doors to solar and they have this new policy in place where they partner up with AV Solar and they will only take the solar panels as a collateral. They will not put your property down. There is no, no sort of collateral need. The solar panels are the collateral. If they don't work, you let them take it away. 80% of this loan is financed as collateral only, solar panels. Now let's look at the numbers. The reason I'm showing you this financing is to explain you that $112,000 that we just previously discussed, which was a very scary number, does not actually have to be. This right here will show you how from day one, not only are you having a four year return on investment, but you are gonna be cash flow positive from day one. How is that gonna happen? Let's look at it. So $190,000, like we had mentioned, is the price of the system. 26% tax credit is 49,400. Let's leave this tax credit on the side for now. The initial loan amount is 80% of the total price. 20% is supposed to be the down payment from customer side. Now, if you take this 80% loan, the first 15 month payment is only 696. If you guys remember, the monthly payment for this storage unit in terms of electricity cost was 1571, $1,571 versus from the very next day, we will drop that down to zero and the bank will ask you to pay a sum of 700 bucks. So you drop your overhead and your cash flow positive directly into half of your bill from the very next month, you try to buy solar. No payments from your side, nothing. Well, for first 15 months is only this. After the first 15 months, if you decide this Uncle Sam tax credit that you're gonna get, if you decide to pay that to the bank, 
your monthlies will always for life be 784. But let's say you don't decide to put that down and you try to channelize that towards developing your unit to a better unit or adding more units or any other upgrades that you want. Then your monthlies will stay at $1,162. Again, that is less than the $1,571 which you pay to Hope Arkansas. This is why solar makes sense right now. Now let's look at this metrics in a split of form. So this is the current. If this facility had no solar, this is how this facility would behave. This is how the facility behaves with solar. So let's look at the monthly electric cost that we had assumed that based off of 5% was 1571 versus what was the monthly financing coming to approximately a $700 and $6 is going to be the base cost from utility. They will not let you go away from the $6. So we're already adding that up. When you multiply this number 15 times, you get 23,000. When you multiply this number 15 times, you get 10,545. So every business owner that decides to go solar in the first 15 months is definitely going to be $13,000 cash positive. And that is, without considering the down payment or without considering any tax incentives that you're going to get from Uncle Sam. 36 months down the lane, which is three years, if you keep taking that average cost and let's say utility rates never go up at zero inflation, you would still end up paying $56,556 to Hope Power and Light. If you had solar, 15 months interest only payment was this, which goes up after the 15 months, actually 1163. When you add both of these numbers together, you're still paying 34,968 versus 56,556. You look at month to month, you look at 15 months to 15 months, you look at the first three years, you're always gonna be cash flow positive. This right here, within the first three years, leaving with $21,000 positive in cash, on top of which you're gonna get $49,000 in incentives from the government, as well as depreciate the system for 45,000. All these factors make solar a no-brainer for today. This is the reason we started this presentation with why solar makes so sense today. Why have you guys been hearing so much of solar, solar everywhere? These are the reasons. Solar finally made its way to Arkansas, the banks in Arkansas. Um, also, one of the points that we have kind of forgotten is once your facility goes solar, on an average, 18% value of your storage facility goes up. And that is because any future businessman who buys your property knows for a fact he's going to be saving $56,000 in the first three years of the system. And that pretty much concludes our presentation. Uh, the last slide is a little bit about us. So like I'd explained, an average system is approximately um, 10 kilowatt to 15 kilowatt or 10,000 watts. We have, within three years of our business, we've installed 1.2 million watts in the state. That's 1.18 uh, gigawatt power. Approximately we're powered. That's approximate power 30,000 houses uses in a day and the average cost of install and our service territory is only for the state of Arkansas. So at the end of this presentation, uh, we're available at our vendor hall. If there are any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And I do understand there's a lot of information that has been exchanged through this presentation. Feel free to reach out for any questions. Thank you so much. Shelly, over Thank to you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, that was definitely jam-packed with, with information. Um, you had several questions come in, though. Um, do you have a couple minutes to run through those with me? Yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, first one came in um, and says, um, how easy are the panels to remove if there's a roof leak that needs to be repaired, or are older roofs treated before installing a solar system? That's actually a very, very good question. Okay, so the answer to that is very straightforward, man. All solar installs are covered up to the first six to seven years in warranty in terms of roof leaks. So if there are any roof leaks, like I said, you would not end up paying anything. This installer, whomever you choose with, will simply come replace that. And to answer you, it's a three hour job. It's not a time consuming job. But to answer the second part of this question, if your roof is old, so the best part of this is once you install solar panels, A, it protects your roof. It is so distributed load that it's equal to a man standing on your roof. So it's 2.6 PSF, which is very less. And in case your roof is really old, when your homeowner, when your business insurance pays you to put a new roof on there, they will actually pay us, the solar installers, the amount of labor cost to remove these panels, 
the roofers will put a new roof and we will install the exact same accessory right back onto your roof. So you're again, not paying anything. We deal with your insurance, we deal with their billings. And as a customer, you can be rest assured once you pay us the first payment, that's the last. So yes. Yeah, okay, couple more. Um, do you offer systems that owners maintain? And if so, what is the average life of the inverter? So all inverter, uh, the systems that we sell, uh, leasing is not something that we as AEV Solar do. We believe that the best advantage of the system is in buying it. So yes, we do maintain it for you for the life of the system, that's 25 years. But the average life of these inverters or optimizers or any component is 25 years because they are warranted for 25 years. They're meant to fail in an average 18 years, but since the warranty is for 25, they will upgrade your product at that time and even the labor charges for the installer to do that are paid by the manufacturer. So to put it in short, 25 years, your inverter is gonna keep running. Good deal. Okay, two more. Um, what is the typical ROI timeframe on solar investment? I think. So like the example that we just took, the Arkansas Modern Storage, that had a four year return on investment. Most of our commercial systems, if you have a south facing roof, keep in very, one important thing is I need the sun to offset your bill. So as long as you have enough sun, between three to five year, five being the worst case scenario, three being the best case scenario for businesses, because we have mappers, we have incentives that all come together. Now, if you're talking about a house, it's anywhere between eight to 10 years, because the same concept of quantity applies, larger the offset, quicker the returns. Okay, last one for you, okay. Um, so Entergy Arkansas, the Little Rock supplier, will allow you to run your meter backwards. Yes, ma'am. So actually, uh, the one more important part that we had limited time, so we didn't share all the information out. Uh, actually, whoever has asked this question is very, it's a very good question. Uh, two, I believe a month ago, we Arkansas Public Service Commission and us as solar companies just won the battle against utilities, where up till 2040, by law, every solar resident with an Entergy, First Electric Cooperative, or any utility in the state of Arkansas are mandated to pay dollar for dollar for every electricity you send them back. They will spin your meter backwards. It's not actually a meter spinning backwards. You will have two numbers display out there. One is REC. What, have you what has the utility received from your solar system? DEL, what have they delivered to you? Do a simple mathematical subtraction and you'll know what you're left. But to answer your question, yes, Entergy does allow us to do that. And you can, you can do this up to five different facilities. You don't have to just install on multiple facilities. You can install on one facility. As long as you own multiple units under Entergy, we will just pass that energy credits over to the other units. So without actually having solar, you can have a net zero bill. Okay, great. Sounds like um, all of those. Um, okay, sorry, one more came in. Do they work in the entire state? Do they work in the entire state? We, as a company, yes, we only work for the state of Arkansas. We do not cross the state of Arkansas. We started this company for people of Arkansas to understand that it's not always, we're not gonna be the last week. Yes, we serve the state territory for sure. That, that question came from um, Charles Snap in Walnut Ridge. So if you haven't been there, you definitely want to. <laughs> we have his, his area from, of the state. Um, yes. Okay, thanks, Jamin. We really appreciate that information and we're um, really happy to be working with you. Um, I am going to send everybody on over to the vendor hall. We're going to be over there until about noon today. So um, just make sure that you're visiting these, these guys and um, they, they put in a lot of work to be here today and we just um, hope that everyone takes advantage of that. Um, otherwise, we hope that everyone that joined us today will um, Join us again on August 19th. We're going to do the, the same type of, of, um, of meeting, and um, we hope that we will see you there. So anyway, thanks, everybody. We really appreciate it. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.